Good morning, folks. Plasma ripping away from the sun in 304 angstroms. We will obviously return to space weather to close the video, but it's nice to begin with these plasma filaments leaving the Earth-facing solar disk. If you did not take down the SVS links yesterday, the Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio really gives NOAA's EVL a run for their money. Got a ton of terrific visualizations. Largest quake of the day was also very unusual. A 5.8 in Australia tops the North Atlantic, Hungarian, and Hawaiian quakes from the last week in terms of rare seismicity. Very peculiar, especially so shallow of a quake. More volcanic eruptions taking place in the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. Meanwhile, the weather outside the Western world continues to be way worse than inside it. How about one rainstorm, 100,000 people affected, thousands of cars, homes, and millions of crops destroyed. Bay of Bengal continues to be dangerous as well, with people washed away and still missing after some flash flooding. We have the tropical storm south of Japan. Not expected to become a major typhoon, but it does herald in the season. Last year's super typhoons will be difficult to beat. Southeastern Australia will have the rain settle in the next few hours. Broken dam in Germany exacerbating the flooding, with severe storms possibly popping up east and south due to Mediterranean moisture. From southern Mexico to Brazil and just south of that, the torrential downpours are unpredictable and locals are better equipped to sense the situation than I am. Got a low cresting SoCal bringing rain to the west right now, meanwhile the low trekking east will dump the moisture carried north from the Gulf of Mexico. Gamma bursts? Whoa. They keep coming. Took two more last night, which makes eight gamma ray flashes in the last seven days. I want to draw your attention to a major density spike on the ace solar wind up near 30 to 50 times average density of quiet solar wind. A smaller but exactly timed spike is visible in the SOHO data as well. This confirms. It's clearly what gave an uppercut to the magnetic shield. That is a major fail on protection as we see plasma penetration to be absorbed in the ionosphere. KP showing some minor instability at the same time even without any speedier particles. Proton wave took a cut at the electron flux which is still milking its limelight from the double storms of the last two weeks. Solar flares hitting the floor. We have one lone developed active region on the Earth facing disk. Was a lot stronger a few days ago, but never gave us the first sign her interacting magnetics were discontent. Even now, we can see only a bit of mixing at the backside where negative red tries to sneak in amongst the blue. If she succeeds, we might get one flare near the limb as usual. Coming quickly to Soho, that's Jupiter coming in to conjoin the Sun in 10 days a day before the geocentric conjunction of Mercury and Venus, and just after that the full moon occurs within one hour of the moon's closest approach to Earth for the entire year, the highest tides of our orbit. At this point one wonders if the Umbra field even has a clue what she's doing up there. I'll simply look ahead a bit on the full disk Stonyhurst heliographic, with the left side about to turn into face Earth, a return of the dark northern coronal hole associated with the 8.3 in Russia late last month. Got shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.